Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the organizer, I would like to remind you are recommended to turn on your camera and change the virtual background to the clinic resume. Let's make it right background. Please mute your microphone to avoid any interference and distraction during this program. Thank you. Before we begin the program, I would like to remind again, please mute your microphone to avoid any interference and distraction during this program. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, guests and audiences. We're about to begin our ceremony. Please have a seat and make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning to our respected panel, Mr. Muhammad Hafiz bin Zulkhairi and my fellow friends from the Faculty of Economy and Muamalat and representative from other faculties. All praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us a chance to gather virtually through this Zoom platform. To participate in this clinic resume, let's make it right program with the topic of completing resume and interview tips. I, Mama Akhil Azlan, will accompany you as this morning throughout this program as your moderator. 
To bless the program, I would like to call upon Muhammad Shabil Irfan bin Muhammad Sabri to lead the dua recitation. With all due respect, welcome. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Praise be to God, the Lord of the world. Peace and blessings are upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions and for those who followed his example till the judgment day. Allahumma ya Allah, on this blessed morning, in conjunction with the clinic resume Let's Make It Right program, we beg you and be grateful towards you in favor of all the infinite blessings to us, your humble servant, to live a safe and prosperous life. We seek your blessing for the flawless progress of this program from the beginning till the end. We seek your guidance to steer clear of events that would be detrimental to the progress of this event. Rabbana alayka tawakkalna wa ilayka anabna wa ilayka al-masir. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana tawakina adhab al-nar. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Amin amin ya rabbal alamin. Thank you to Muhammad Shabil Irfan by Muhammad Sabri for leading their dua recitation just now. I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give his blessing and make sure that the program for today's will run smoothly. All right. For your information, our program for today will be divided into two sessions. The first slot is a sharing session on tips and tricks for making resumes and interview from our beloved panel, Mr. Hafiz. And this session will be conducted for 40 minutes. Meanwhile, on the second slot, we will do a bedah resume session where Mr. Hafiz will review some resumes from our lucky participants today and there will be a Q&A session at the end. All right, participants are encouraged to ask any questions regarding today's topic to the panel. Before we go through our topic, I would like to formally introduce all of you to a little hindsight into our panel's career path. Mr. Muhammad Hafiz bin Zulkhairi first embarked on the journey for knowledge expansion by taking a degree in Bachelor's of Muhammad Administration with honours from University Science Islam Malaysia. Mr. Muhammad Hafiz has more than nine years as a human resource officer in several local and international private companies and now he is working as a human resource recruiter at Sapura Energy. So without further ado, I would like to invite our respected panel, Mr. Muhammad Hafiz bin Zulkhairi, to take over the floor and to deliver his talk on the topic of completing resume and interview tips. With all due respect, welcome. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Sound check, mic check. All okay? Can you hear me, Akin? Uh, loud and clear. All right, thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, to our fellow handsome master of ceremony today, Mr. Akil Azlan. Thank you so much for your good introduction. And uh, you know, this is the spirit that we want in the morning of Saturday. I know all of you are supposed to have your uh, good rest on Saturday. But thank you so much. Uh, until now, uh, I saw there's a, a, a participant who still, uh, you know, have a passion towards this session. And well done to you all. So um, a good start. Um, and as was my previous session with Sacrifice previously, this is my second session. Thank you so much, Sacrifice and Lucim invited me. Uh, just a quick introduction. Um, so my name is Muhammad Hafiz bin Zulkhairi. Okay. So uh, for today's session, uh, I understand that there will be a two uh, subtopic that will be covered, right? First on the theories and also the tips. And second one, we will go through with the um, so-called uh, uh, Bada Resume. Okay. 
So that's that's the part where I think there's a crucial part and the important part that you have to focus on. All right. Um, anyway, um, let's 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 start with it. Only that I want to know before we start uh, those online. Uh, before we start, uh, I would like to have uh, uh, to give a safety briefing first, right? I do understand all of you are currently at home or anywhere you are. Please make sure that your surrounding is in a safe condition, right? Uh, and when you are doing your things and hearing this session, please make sure you are away from any risk or dangerous uh, matters. Okay, so if you need to take an emergency call or any emergency that you need to leave the call, please slowly leave the call uh, in a safe, safely manner, right? And if someone is cooking currently, because I know it's at home, right? So make sure uh, hang it, yeah, all your breakfast for today while you're enjoying this session, okay? So I hope that uh, all of you can give a full attention. Um, please, uh, do you, if you should you have any question, uh, let's, let's have it uh, during our Q&A session. So I will open the, the question to the floor once, once uh, you know, I completed my, my part, okay? Um, all right, so Akhil, I can start for now? Yes, Mr. Baba, please. Okay, thank you. So let me take, start my count. Um, okay, uh, I'll be sharing my screen, all right? Okay, so once again, uh, before we start, uh, so I hope uh, all of you are ready, okay, with your notes and everything, because uh, I know this, this, this session is, is recorded, but at least if you have any question that you need to ask during the uh you know uh that, that you need to take note please please do so right um <clears throat> my name is Muhammad Hafiz bin Khairi. so let's go through with the agenda for today uh we, we're going to, to have a drug action first regards to this topic and what is the resume and the importance um also we will go through how to design a bit the resume and also the tips as well right and what are the key takeaways uh, from this uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the importance of it. So that's what will be the first part. And uh, the second part will be the Beda Resume uh, session. So I guess this is uh, uh, the, the, the things and also the time that you're waiting for, all right? And lastly, we will do it a Q&A session after the Beda Resume, okay? Um, so please allow me. Uh, I know this session has started with the English uh, version. But I will mix it. Uh, yep. Uh, unfortunately, my Arabic is not so good, but I will mix it only with Malay and English only. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's the thing where you don't really practice your uh, third language, Arabic. So it's already rusty. Huh? Okay. So you should, should maintain that while you're still studying. So uh, I was born in Kedah, raised and born in Kedah, but my parents are not from Kedah, right? Uh, they are from Perak, uh, but due to the duty that need to be in Kedah, so hence that's why um, I was born and raised there. Yeah. So those who are orang Kedah here, yeah? selamat pagi nah. Dengan makan nasi kandak sangat nah. Okay. Uh, and uh, my last, uh, my tertiary education was in Ijazah Sajana Muda Petak Piramak Malat, with honours. Right. That time I was graduated back in 2014. Yeah. Um, and I believe uh, there's a uh, few of my kamaridis uh, uh, who still in fam currently. One of it is uh, Dr. Akilah and also Dr. Ikmal. Uh, those who knows, yeah. Um, I'm married with one child, right? Um, and my my experience, just a little experience, yeah, compared to 
to to others those in the industries um, nine years plus plus in human resource uh, partly I'm I'm most of the time I'm I'm managing on the recruitment part yeah and of course on the generalist part lah, partly on the generalist part okay so so that's that's my background um, and where I am currently I'm staying in Dinkil. Yeah, um, and of course, uh, my current company is Sapra Energy Perhat. Okay, so that was me. Uh, recently, I was in uh, OTC. OTC is an offshore technology uh, conference Asia, uh, which uh, normally um, all language industry will having this kind of conference and gather all the um, all language players. Yeah. Uh, so hence, this is a good opportunity for me to, to have in this session. So I hope you all also will have an opportunity in future as well. Yep. All right. So without further ado, uh, sorry, before I start, uh, can I have a thumbs up for all the participants today? If you're okay, please raise a thumbs up. Okay, before we start, I want you to keep warm first. Okay, before uh, we start with the... Uh, with the session, right? Okay. Anyone? How can I see the thumbs up too? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's start. Uh, so basically, what is resume? You know, when you 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 know what is resume. Of course, people we know is about applying the jobs. You know, uh, something about uh, uh, people want to know about you. You know, resume is something that represent who you are. So basically. Uh, it's actually a formal document uh, that, that, that display on the individual's professional background and relevant skills because this is a rep to represent who you are, you know, if let's say people are unable to meet you in person, you know. So at least this is the, the, the evidence or document that shows uh, at the first glance. So, you know, when people tak pernah jumpa you, that people want to know about you, so of course they are cutting out your profile, right? So resume is part of the formal document that they can uh, know about you, okay? Because when you provide the resume to anonymous or unknown person, it's considered you have given a consent to them to review about your background and profile, okay? So today I will make uh, I will let you know what are the things that you can put or you you should not put or advisable to put good to have, must have, you know. So all these criteria, all these things and tips that uh, you will have during today, I would like to share with all of you together, yeah. So maybe most of my sharing could be differ with other people in the market, lah, yeah, because sometimes this is mostly based on my experience, where also based on my reading as well. And I apply also, I want to apply together during this session, okay. So uh, for now, uh, let's see uh, the importance to have the resume. So it's actually, as I mentioned, it's a first impression towards the potential employer of you. So when you want to apply for a job, of course, uh, resume is the most important document that you need to provide, okay? So because today there's a lot of things that you can portray who you are. We have, uh, mass media, I mean, mean uh, social media uh, in any form that you can use, you know, uh, that one through video, also through through your, uh, I would say, besides your social media, you also have your professional, uh, if you know, LinkedIn, okay, so that's that's the, the professional uh, networking that you can have instead of you have your TikTok or Instagram, okay, and it's resume is also one of the important when you want to apply for a job yeah in the market so mostly this resume is required because they want uh it provides you an opportunity to market yourself to employers 
So whenever people know you somewhere, okay, for example, you are uh, always appeared in uh, social media, uh, and you are uh, came from this background, this background. So people want to know more about you, right? So sometimes when you do a um, a virtual kind of uh, presentation towards just uh, towards the people, they unable to know more you in better because could be there's an interest from someone who like to have you be part of their team, you know, or to know more you regards to what are the best, uh, especially on the business part, what what but they can, uh, I mean, uh, what you can contribute to their to their business and so on. So these are the importance of why you need to have the the, the resume itself. Okay, so it's also a, a important step in the application process. So most of the companies nowadays, they have a lot of application process, uh, you know, various kind of application process. It could be came up from the system, the job portal. Uh, it could be directly emailed to them, or you can scan uh, a QR code and upload your, your resume. So it's, it's various way of you can apply to the job application, right? And from this um, uh, resume, it also will outline your skills, your background, and your education. So people wants to know, especially when they have a job opening in the market, uh, what kind of candidate or background of people that they want to hire. So of course, a resume is important because they want to know what are the key skills that they are looking at, what are the background of the of this candidate that they are, they want. And the education part, of course, is important because certain roles are require a related uh, education uh, background. So hence, that's why this information are very useful to the hiring managers and also to the the uh, to the human resources as well. Okay, and this also could help them to eliminate unqualified candidates because you know nowadays. I do understand in terms of to find a job is really hard in the market nowadays, not only in Malaysia, it's throughout the world as well. So hence, that's why uh, in order for us to hire a person, so as myself, as, as a human resource people, I also want to find and look up for the those who are the best talent in the market, right? So uh, there's a many criteria that we are looking at, of course. But first thing first, we want to know who are these people that we want and what kind of can background that they have. So it could be when we require the requirement of the job uh, that might have on a certain candidate. So that's why we need to review the, these documents before we can call you up for the next process, right? So un unfortunately to those unqualified candidates, there might be a reason why you are not being shortlisted and so on, yeah? So it could be very, huh? the, the, the reason. And lastly, it allows you to demonstrate your written communication skills. So this is also the important part because when you have clearly stated in your resume, that means that your written skills is good. People understand what you are putting in um, is clear. And, uh, people, and, and the most important part, people understand uh, what is your background and who you are. So without... Uh, so this is also can can save a time for 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 us, uh, you know, uh, to to review and also to shortlist those related candidates. Yeah. Uh, so I guess <coughs> you also wants to know <coughs> besides the importance. So these are the things that maybe these are the part of the importance that I might miss out. But you have to know that this is the first impression that what the employer or the company would like to know before they want to proceed to hire a right person, okay? Um, types of resume, okay? So actually, I think, girl, honestly, during my time, uh, when I was, uh, because mas, uh, masa I, 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 I start to, to uh, you know, my internship, I have no idea what I want to do, right? Hence, hence, that when there is a session during my time uh, that you need to create a resume, okay? And honestly, that time, during my time, there's no session or workshop that really could help us in order to create a good resume. So who are our reference? So that time is only our lecturers, okay? 
uh, internet yes we do but because that time is very limited access uh, you know back in eight to nine years ago about 10 years ago um, the, the the internet is very limit uh, it's very limited you know during our time especially in usim and the, the only time that we have a connection is in usim inside the usim so because i was in i'm staying in in the rent house so so normally the the, the line connection and line internet is very hard to find only if on, and only if we go to those friends who have a um, uh, in their house have for internet, then only that's the only time that we can access the internet. So hence, the only reference that we have at time is either our lecturers, okay, or um, yeah, we just uh, searching in the in the website uh, or any anything in Google. So when 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 I saw there is actually a type of resume uh, that we can do, okay. So basically, in the market uh, or generally. Uh, most of it, when I do some research, is actually they have three types of resume. Okay, one is the chronological resume. Uh, so basically, this is a classic format, lah. Okay, uh, and and it's more preferable for the the job seekers uh, to do to use because uh, companies, uh, recruiters, HR, human resource, and also the hiring managers they would prefer this kind of type of resume. Okay, because uh, they will put uh, the about your current work experience, uh, about your um, achievements, and what are the things that uh, it's kind of traditional way of doing the the resume. Okay, but for functional resume is mostly is emphasized on your skills, so not much in terms of your background and so on, but. Um, you know your work history, but it's, it's more on those who actually uh, want to move for jobs. But anyway, this is sometimes some of, of this resume is actually, if you ask me normally when we, we apply in Malaysia, right? Uh, it's still the same. Yeah? Whether you want to move a job, when you want to apply a job, are you uh, or you are recent graduates, you know, or you are actually uh, already. Uh, seasonal uh, people in the industry so the type of resume that we normally use in Malaysia is is about the same eh? uh, more or less is the same and combination resume is a format that combine both uh, reverse chronology and functional resume so basically uh, hence that's why some of the resume is quite long you know it could be up to five to six pages because a lot of things they want to put there so hence Honestly, if you ask me, there is a pro and cons, of course, when you want to apply for a job. So it really depends on the type of role that you want to apply. Uh, and for me, it should suit with the job that you want to apply when you want to create a resume. For example, uh, I can give an example uh, such as if you want to apply for a barista job, for example, or a retail uh, specialist uh, or as a frontline. Uh, so basically, you do not require to do a very long resume. Okay. Uh, because this is due to, uh, you have to know that the retail industry, uh, they are very fast moving industry. So they require a people very fast. And of course, they need a lesser time to review all the application and so on. Hence, that's why for me, what I see is it, if you can simplify your resume uh, with a good information and the right information inside there, then I think that will be good enough. Okay. Unless if you want to apply for a different kind of job, for example, as an engineer, it's an experienced engineer that we are looking at. Okay. So I give you an example as a project engineer. Okay. So we are looking at people with at least five to six years of experience. So hence, a requirement that we require, of course, you need to have this kind of exposure, uh, expertise, technical skills, all these things. So hence, that's why your resume cannot be as short as uh, one page, okay? Because it's very limited information that you provide to the uh, recruiter or human resource or the hiring managers 
to review you and also to identify are you the right candidate for this job. Hence, that's why you need to make sure and to know that what are the things to put in your resume. Okay, so maybe um, uh, later on I can share with you the videos what how the reverse chronology resume looks like and the functional resume looks like. Okay, so next. Uh, have you ever heard about CV? And you also heard about resume also, right? So, so basically, uh, CV and resume is actually the, the function is still the same, basically. But only that, there's still a difference yeah, between resume and, and CV. Hence, that's why uh, we need to know that um, what's the difference between these two. Huh? Okay, so initially in my thought, CV is actually a very short, short kind of document. Okay, thank you, Akhil. Um, and resume is, is longer, but actually, no, CV is quite longer compared to resume. And if you can see the difference here is resume should include those uh, about your work experience and skills that are relevant to job opening. Whereas for CV, you need to put a lot of things, I mean, in details. Yeah. So especially those who are applying for the bigger jobs, uh, like a project management kind of role, higher position. So at least to give uh, understanding from the hiring manager about what it's all about from your background. Okay. So if you can see the format, kind of format, just we just go through on this. Uh, it's also a different <laughs> between two uh, documents. All right. So resume have, uh, I would say, very brief or shorter kind of information that you need to put. Uh, whereas for CV, it's quite longer. Yeah. And most of it, they require some uh, achievement awards that you need to put. Uh, so at least they know that uh, what is your achievement. Okay. And mostly, I would say uh, uh, in Malaysia, Normally, people will say CV or resume. So, for me, it's, it's, it depends on what type of role that you're applying. But it's, it, it is not wrong that if you want to use CV format or resume format. Only thing is you need to know what are the items that you need to put in your resume. Okay? So, next, let's go through how to design and build your resume properly. Okay? Uh, so, at least this is a guidance for you. Uh, might be outside there. There is other things that you feel like is also good to have <clears throat> that you should put, okay? But you need to understand, uh, based on my experience, I think this is the things that you should put and must put, uh, you know? So for the, because you need to help uh, recruiters and also hiring managers as well, in order for them to, uh, you know, make a right decision, okay? And save their time as well. So uh, I do understand, uh, in order to, to build a resume, you need to put a lot of right words and information, okay? So first thing first, please make sure you put your personal and contact information. So this is could be, uh, it depends on you because you have to understand, yeah? Malaysia, we have uh, an act we call as a Personal Data Protection Act 2010. Uh, so this Personal Data Act is actually quite sensitive in terms of uh, your personal details, your background, yeah, because people will misuse and abuse your information, your personal information. So that could be something that you need to take note uh, and make sure that you are not, uh, you know, you are protected. So hence, that's why me as uh, work as a as a human resource and also recruiter, that's the other important thing that I cannot simply reveal people's personal details, especially resume. So, whoever that I share the resume is to those who are actually have a right to review your profile. Okay, so hence that's why you cannot simply simply share with your family members, your friends, and so on, unless there's a good reason and purpose why you need to. But mostly, it's all about the job purposes. Okay. Second is professional summary introduction. I will show to you sample later on as well. So you need to have at least a short summary about yourself, your background, before you go through 
to the next part of your resume. Okay, so this short introduction summary to give people a heads up about who you are, you know, about your background and so on. Right. Next is all about education. You must put that because education doesn't necessarily about your degree level or your diploma level, but it's also about your certification. Okay, your your uh accreditation. Okay, so for example, uh those students with the accounting background, of course, SCCA is one of the top highest uh, accreditation that you will get, right? So that's part of the education that you can put as well. Okay. Next is on the work experience, your prof or your professional experience means your experience that you work before. Internship, I can say nowadays people already put as part of the professional experience. Hence why? Because it's already evolved. Last time internship, you just made a coffee, right? 10, 20 years ago, people would say, uh, you buy internship, you bought copy je, you bought photostat je. You just tolong tolong your seniors and so on. But nowadays, no. Internship already have, have has evolved and even you have a, a very structured internship program yeah, where it also will elevate you to the next level to be part of the uh, preferred next employee for the company. So hence, that's why this, uh, uh, the work experience is, is very important. And for me, any work experience that you feel is really give you a positive contribution towards the job, you can put that as part of your, uh, you know, uh, work experience. Okay. Next one is on the key skills. So if you are a technical person, engineers, uh, or any system that you use, please put that as a key skills. Right. <laughs> when we talk about personal key skills, it's like. Uh, People might have, might say it's a teamwork, presentation skills, you know, communication skills. So that's kind of personal skills that people also. But if you found that, do you have any very unique kind of personal skills? You know, uh, one of it is meticulous, meticulousness. Uh, please Google about it. So meticulousness is about how detail means you are a kind of detailed person. Okay. <laughs> so of course, that part is very important. Whatever that you put there must be reflect to you. It's not for the purpose of having to look nice on your resume only, but you have to uh, uh, mean sorry, uh, walk the talk. Okay. So if you know how to do uh, presentation skill very well, okay, then people will test you. If you know to do uh, you know a negotiation skill. Uh, for example, with the customers and so on, so people will test you. So if you put that for the sake of to look good only for your resume, to look very nice, then I won't really encourage you to do that. Okay. Uh, and, and lastly, it's about language. So language, you can put any type of language that you are, uh, you conversely, you know, uh, you, you are preferred and also you converse. Uh, you're able to converse, okay? And also, just put the level of your, uh, you know, how, what level are you uh, for this language? It can be intermediate, it can be uh, beginner, and it also, also can be, uh, people normally say, uh, it's a, what do you call that? Uh, it's like it's your mother tongue, Okay, I can't remember the, the, the terms. So so basically that's that's uh, also is advisable to put. Okay. Reference is also good to have, you know, uh because people we know who is your uh at least people can have a quick reference check about you when you put the reference. But some people they will put upon request. So something is all about the PDPA as well. Yeah, personal data protection as well. So sometimes they don't want to reveal their reference uh, contact details. Yeah. So hence that's where it's a it's a candidate rights also to do that. Photo, if you want to put a photo, I would uh, I would encourage as well, but make sure you put a formal photo, yeah. Um formal means doesn't mean that you need to wear a tie and so on, but you have to know what kind what type of formal photo. 
But if you take a selfie, your background is at the park, or your background is Eiffel Tower, or London Bridge, or in Mekah. So I think that's not a right photo for you to put. Huh? Okay, unless you put uh, a right and proper photo on your own, that would be better. Then that's good enough already. Okay, right. You still have a time on Akhil? Yes, Mr. Hafiz, another 10 okay. minutes. All right, okay, sure, thank you. Okay, so optional for you to put as well. This is to those who have this kind of information, okay? So, uh, certifications, licenses, trainings, you can put, okay? So, for example, um, if you are a certified uh, a trainer, for example, or are you are certified, uh, uh, I think there's a certification for the Islamic banking, right? So, on. Uh, so, you can put that as part of your certification. But please make sure that you have a proof of that, the originality and the authenticity of that. Because if you putting it without any evidence, then people found that you put a, it's considered a fraud. Yeah? So you 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 don't you don't say the truth. Okay. And just now I also said languages. Okay, languages also you can put uh, optional. Awards, achievement, and honors. So because my scope today is focusing more on uh as a fresh graduates, you know, and also when you want to build a resume for your internship for Latian industry later on, okay? So since you don't have any much work experience to put, right? So I think awards and achievement or honors is, is something that I would encourage you to put. For example, achievement. So for today, you have your own uh, sacrifice committee, right? Who organized for this session. So I think this is part of your achievement. Yeah, so you put your, uh, what is your, uh, your scope, okay? You are as a project director, for example. Uh, you manage, uh, uh, you, you, you conduct or organize uh, the clinic resume, for example. So that's, that's part of the achievement that you can put. So awards, for example, uh, I think AXIS is still here, right? Um, Academic as well. So... If you have any awards that you have, or maybe a dean list awards, please put it. Because that's the information that you have that want to show who you are, what is your achievement, and people want to know, okay, right, this candidate is, is good. And because not only the educational part, but also on the curriculum, uh, extra curriculum part as well. Okay. Uh, so that's that's the thing that I will encourage you when you want to build a resume later on for your internship and even after internship as well, please put that as part of your items in the resume. Okay, volunteer work uh, also good to put. Uh, you can put also under achievement as well or maybe under activities. Yeah, uh, in subsection uh, activities or maybe uh, achievement. So yeah, please put that. Because this is shown that you are actually very actively not only in front of your laptop or PC or in the office, but also in uh, to join any events. So sometimes a company, they actually organize quite numbers of events. So somehow they also require a people to help and also to manage the event. So when they know that you are experienced on managing the events, to do the volunteering, uh, you know, uh, so that's where you will be prioritized. And that part is a good experience that you can put it in your resume as well when you apply for a job. Okay. Publication. So sometimes this is um, to those who have publication because I think uh, those who with the title, the doctorate title with a PhD or maybe they have a books, they came out uh, with the industry. So I think that's also you can put. Okay. And lastly, notice period and availability. Lah. So means that how long you can join the company. How long do you need to serve your notice with your current company in order to join the new company? So for example, in the, in nowadays, uh, normally uh, it's between one month to three months. It's a norm nowadays. Okay. Uh, so you can put the notice period at the last part of your resume. Okay. Right. Um, 
so next let's let's go through with the important tips that i also want to share with you okay so whenever you want to build a resume uh before you start you need to make sure that who you want to target for for this resume okay so this is the important tips eh? because you need to know that who is your readers who, who will review your resume so people like me okay uh, people in the industry <laughs> it could be uh, someone uh, who are actually able to help you to to recommend to other person for the uh, for the opportunity for the job opportunity okay so uh, it's not just a box because you need to understand that nowadays uh, uh, the resume also evolve uh, last time become a traditional but now we have a lot of tools that you can use in order to build up your resume, such as you have ChatGPT, right? You can do a lot of things. Just request with that, that brother. Hello, brother Chat GPT, please put this, put this in my resume. So it's all in your fingertips now. But you have to know what you need to put and what you cannot put as well. Because when because nowadays a lot of job uh, uh, application is all go through the system. So we call it as an ATS system. ATS is an applicant tracking system where most of the big, big companies, they already have the system and whenever the candidate applies, so they track all the requirements. Is it match with your resume or not? So whenever it's match, and that's why you will be shortlisted for the first uh, shortlist, you know, for the next round of the process. So hence, that's why nowadays, I would advise you to use the right words and a tips also go through with all the job, uh, job details or job description of that job and put, if you find it, there is a related uh, requirement that match with you. For example, you as a uh, um, I, I put an easy example is like uh, uh, accounting student yeah? so accounting student you uh, you study accounting so you learn about FRIS um, management accounting cost accounting uh, and so on so on and this role required uh, uh, fresh graduates okay or, or, or early hires uh, who has a process a knowledge of for example, management accounting, cost accounting, uh, or maybe uh, uh, something like um, uh, PNL, you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, knowledge. Yeah. So that's why when you put the right words which can match with your resume, I think the higher chances that with more than fifty percent you will get shortlisted. Okay. Uh, because this is a new trend, you know. Last time, you just people just simply apply plus their resume without really reviewing the job scope uh, description. But nowadays, you have to know we most of the company are using the system, the ATS system. So basically, we we use this as a tools as well to help us to source for the right candidate. So make sure all the uh, importance keywords in the job also tell you with what you have so tapi kalau tak ada jangan letak kan kalau dia nak uh, those people with the contoh bursa uh, uh, what we call that bursa uh, reporting experience you ada ke masa fresh grad you tak ada kan you tak pernah buat so don't put that as part of it so my tips is look at the job requirements and also the job description whichever could match just put it okay and if if you are good with the words you can make it creatively you know uh, to make sure that it looks like you are actually have an exposure for that kind of uh, job requirement okay also narrow down your job target okay so just look at what kind of job that you want and if you find it is could match with you and you would like to try with it just carry on okay 
don't simply apply with all the jobs that not really match with your skills or background. Okay, but I know <laughs> nowadays it's hard to find a job, and uh, and sometimes some people when they are study engineering, for example, they don't want to do engineering. They don't want to. Do, they want to do sales, for example. So these are something that I believe you have to tally with what the requirement of the job itself. Okay, and a good thing is that's why I think extracurricular in university is is also very important to those fresh grad. I would suggest to you to join any events, you know, or become a committee, join any club in your in Usim. Uh, you know, in order to enhance, not only for yourself, but also for your future. Uh, because why I'm saying this, la last time during my time uh, in Usim, right, uh, most of my friends uh, really uh, work hard in, in their study. Yeah, and, and, and of course, I'm, I'm, I didn't say that I didn't work hard. Lah. It's just that... Uh, I see what are the, you know, because somehow you are not good in study as well. You are not good a performer. Uh, I never had a Dean List Award, yeah, unfortunately. But the thing is, you have to know what you can do differently from other people. So you need to have a, a different way of, to portray yourself, to show who you are. Because you cannot think only for now, not only until the end of your semester or your, your study, but you have also to think what next for you. Okay. I'm not talking about okay. Uh, even though when you said okay, never mind. Uh, I want to I I, I about business, the past study ni. join For me, that's not the thing. The thing is if you experience to organize an event or join an event, become a committee. Is also part of the management skills because when you do not have this kind of skills so it's hard for you to put in your resume what are the things that i should do for example and even if you want to do a business how should i communicate with people properly what are the things that i should prioritize first so you have to know when you join all these events and so on it's actually give you a significant um uh, experience and value where you will realize it and appreciate it once you left your study time. Believe me, it's happened to me and I'm very glad that last time, uh, honestly, uh, unfortunately, I'm not in the sacred frame last time, but I was in Pusat uh, Kebudayaan. So I'm part of the committee member uh, of the of Pusat Kebudayaan. So, so basically, that taught me and expose me with the real life of working, okay? And you work closely with those uh, uh, administrative people, uh, people in the office, so, so, so you learn how they work. You've been exposed on what they are doing and what are the do and don'ts, you know, when you're doing your job. So these are the things could uh, build up or make yourself marketable when you want to apply for a job after you finish your study. So put that as well as part of your achievement. Okay. Uh, yeah. So so next one is on design your resume for ATS. Uh, so uh, this excuse is me, Mr. Hafiz. Yep. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I uh, would like to remind that we have uh, five more minutes before we start okay. the second slot. Sure. No problem. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Akil. Thank you, Akil. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this, uh, and also when you put your resume make it if you want to use the color put it strategically don't put too much colors as well okay uh, make it look nice uh, you know and also simplify your words uh, or be concise if you want to put one pager you need to be uh, be concise and simplify your word, uh, your words okay and uh, put also significant achievement as i mentioned okay uh, and make sure your font is readable yeah don't put the italic or really like a, the font yang pusing-pusing tu. So, it's hard for for the recruiter or hiring manager to review your wording. Okay? And also, it gives an impact and impression also towards your profile. And lastly, don't lie. Okay? That's the thing that I mentioned. Don't lie. If you don't have that, don't put that. Okay? Because when they caught that, you are simply put 
So it's already reflect about your attitude in as well. So these are the important tips that I will share. And final tips as well. Uh, I mean, this is additional. Lah, okay, you can include adequate white space. So make sure that spacing is not too tight between one line to another line. Okay, make sure I have give a space uh, for the readers to understand. Use verb and present tense consistently. Uh, so jangan guna the present tense guna then ujung tu past tense. Uh, so consistently use the same uh, tense. If you want to use present tense, present tense. Okay, use a conservative font. So as I mentioned, I know not only Times New Roman or Arial Black only in the because of words, but use other type of font that also is readable as well. Okay, uh, font size. Just uh, sorry, font style. I pref I would prefer uh, and encourage you to use either one on font or two fonts max. That's all. Don't put more than two fonts because um, unless you feel that you want to add on another one, three type of font, that's fine. But don't make it very, uh, you know, uh, uh, because people want to to read your. Resume properly, so don't make a trouble for trouble to people to read because they don't understand because of a lot of fonts that you put inside there. Okay, and also don't misspell anything. Make sure you check. Okay, whatever you do after you complete. So lastly, spell check, spell check, spell check. So these are the things that you need to do before you send your resume. Okay. So, uh, before we end, I think I want to share a few things about the types of professional summary that you can put as well. So, these are the types of summary. So, it's just a short sentence that you can put, okay? Sometimes people put professional summaries. Some people put career summary, okay? If you look at the, uh, on the left side of the, of the box there, there is a color. What other things, uh, you know, it's a guidance lah. What you put, you can put, uh, uh, you know, so at least you know what to put, what are the content of your professional summary. So these are the things that is also helpful because professional summary is the top one, right? Before you go through with all the other items, okay? Uh, before that, um, cover letters, I would say um, nowadays, not many people are using cover letters anymore, but it's also helpful also for you to put, uh, you know, but don't, uh, my encourage, uh, I encourage you when you send an application, combine together cover letter as a first page and next is your resume. So at least the people will start to read your cover letter first, then they will go through your resume. Okay. So this give a first impression also. Um, okay. So I think uh, before we end uh, on our first session, so the takeaways is you have to know what is this importance of the resume, okay? Uh, and what you need to put in the resume. What are the key highlights that you need to put in the resume? So these are the important part because people will uh, want to understand and know about what, who you are and what is your background, okay? Uh, get feedbacks from the experts or experienced people, all right? In your current condition, uh, uh, you might have a limited people that can advise you. So I think lecturers is the nearest one. Otherwise, uh, you can go to reach out to any people in LinkedIn. I would suggest you to have a LinkedIn account from now, even though you are first or second year of student, start to have a LinkedIn account in order for you to know what is the industry, uh, you know, what happened in industry. So at least you can re uh, connect with these people industry and to gain uh, advice uh, from them. Uh, keep exploring new trends in this industry. This is most important because we are keep evolving year to years. Okay, and digitalization is the most important part in Malaysia currently and also globally. So please make sure you learning all these uh, trends as well in the work trends lah, eh? not the TikTok trends ah. Eh? What I mean is the work trend. Okay, always have a learner mindset. So learner mindset, don't stop learning, don't stop learning, don't stop learning. Even though you have finished your study, don't stop learning because this could help you to elevate your value in the market, your uh, personality, 
because if you don't learn from below if you don't learn don't keep learning you will be fall behind trust me okay and lastly refer with multiple sources make sure the sources that you check is the right source okay clarify clarify the source don't simply share if you're not sure okay and uh yeah so basically uh before we end also this is a just a tips on building your personal brand on LinkedIn. So how you can, you know, when you want to create a LinkedIn profile account, please make sure that uh, you go through with all these uh, items. Okay. So uh, I guess that's it for the first session. Uh, thank you so much, Akil. Um, and over to you. Yep. Right. Thank you, Mr. Hafiz, for extending us to with the new knowledge of the topic of completing resume and also some interview tips. So now we will move on to the exciting part of this program, which is Bedah Resume and also a Q&A slot. So as a reminder for the participants, if you have any question, you may turn on your microphone or even use the chat space provided to ask the question at the end of this slot. So prior to delivering the question, Make sure that all participants, please introduce your name and your faculty, of course. Now, without wasting time, I would like to invite Mr. Hafiz once again to conduct this slide. With all due respect, welcome. All right. Uh, thanks again, Akhil. Uh, Give me some time. Uh, just give me a while. Eh? Uh, give me a second. I just want to share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, Mr. Davis. Sure. All right. Uh, I think the screen is already disappeared. I okay. think Mr. Davis can we try to share your screen? Can you see? Um, now, yes. Good. Thank you. All right. So I have a few resume that uh, with me today. Uh, so that's the part that where I will, uh, you know, uh, will share with you what uh, sample and also something that you need to take on. So let's go through with one by one uh, with all this uh, sample of CV. So basically, there's some of the things that is good to have and, and something that you can put or not advisable to put or maybe, uh, you know, just to remove it. <clears throat> so basically, uh, from your same side, I have one. I will show you later. So that, that, person has, uh, that, that person has given me the consent to share his profile for improvement. That's a good thing. Uh, and the other resume that I will share is actually... Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, I need to uh, cover uh, you know, all their personal details and so on, which I believe uh, there's something that we need to protect as well. Okay, And from my personal uh, side, uh, I will be, uh, you know, uh, will, uh, will be accountable uh, for this if anything happens. So that's why, hence, I blur all the details of this candidate. Okay. First, resume that if you can see here, actually this is a photo, okay? So the type of resume they do, uh, that this is a she. Uh, she's currently, 
you know, uh, has an uh, work experience lah, uh, because she has already completed the the education. Okay, back in twenty twenty three. So basically, this is uh, because when you build a resume, right, you have to know what are the things that you need to put, as I mentioned just now in the tips. So make sure that all this information is relatable to you and could give an impact to you. So this is one of the, I believe, is a, a resume that, uh, well, basically this candidate has passed the interview and hired, okay? And uh, so she start with, uh, on the item on the left side, she put on the personal details, lah. okay? This is her photo um, uh, and also her background. She put the name as well here. Okay, make sure. Oh, sorry, I I I didn't remind you. About. So so basically, the personal details is including your name. Yeah. So if people you don't put your name, people don't know who you are. So your name is also required to put. Make sure it's visible. Visible mean senang orang nak baca lah. Okay, orang boleh jumpa nama you, orang tahu nama you apa. Okay, and uh, <coughs> and for this part, she put the the uh, educational background okay whereas here she already put for me is is a, a it's a duplication so i would not recommend to put that under your name so your name is just your name because you need to know one part you have to divide maksudnya bahagi bahagikan uh, section to ikut the 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 the, the subtopic or criteria of the information. So for example, kalau you nak letak the personal details only, only personal details at this part. Okay, on the left side. Right? She put the contact details, phone number, also important. Okay, uh, for us to call you. Email address, of, of course, there's a must also. Okay, and optional, you can put your LinkedIn as well if you want, if you have an account LinkedIn. Okay, so you don't have to put your your uh, Instagram or TikTok accounts. Huh? That's not uh, recommended. Lah. Okay, uh, unless you are doing for the multimedia kind of role or mass communication kind of role. So if you feel that's valuable, value for you to put, then you just put. Okay, that's the first part. Professional summary. Kalau you tengok kat sini, uh, a short professional summary. Lah. So the tulis a strongly driven leader interested in pursuing career in field of accounting risk finance so dia bagi tahu what are the interests in the professional summary ataupun you can start what is your background so because of this candidate is a fresh graduate so of course you need to know you need to put your interests first that's my my, my recommendation okay or you also can start with your background so your background in accounting this is this okay and um, and also you also have an experience in internships or so on so you can put as well if you don't put that's fine okay and next what is your interest also you can put there right and you can put what is your personality as well okay and uh, also uh, what are your achievement as well you can put as part of it a small i mean a key achievement lah what i say what what i mentioned is a key is uh, achievement okay and then um, abundant willingness to learn new skills. Yeah. So basically, these are the uh, a short summary of you on your professional part. Lah. Okay. So you can put your education first as well. Okay. Since as a fresh graduate, I will encourage you to put the education first because these are the main important things that what are the recruiters and hiring manager wants to know. Okay. So you let up. Name of university, okay, make sure it's correct. This check. Uh, location also important because sometimes, uh, like Usim, you have two locations, right? One in Pandan and one in Nilai. Sometimes people want to know your location as well because, uh, especially for internship, because sometimes the employer want to know are you okay to travel or not to that certain location. So, kalau you dekat KL, contoh Pandan, so you okay boleh travel to KL, for example. But if you in the light, also okay, no problem. It's just that uh, if that uh, internship placement, for example, based in Malacca, 
So are you okay or not to travel to Malaysia, for example? Then, then that's fine. Okay, you can put the the location as well. And also your uh, studies. What is your majoring? What uh, your bachelor in what? In common administration or accounting, or corporate, for example. Okay, and um, <laughs> for me, I I don't encourage you to put straight away the detail of your achievement here, because she for this candidate lah. What I'm saying is she don't put the header of the dis description. So, for example, these are the achievement or so-called like uh, uh, awards lah, I would say, for her, okay, for the projects that she, she did. So, uh, it could be a confusing things conf to, or to, to the reader, so that uh, you, you, you will give a hard time also lah to the readers or to the hiring managers to read. So, for me, just put the title of this description. So, for example, if let's say she put like this, so you uh, you can put the header is maybe your projects, okay, or your participation for your participant or your activities as a header, okay. Then you can put also your final project, okay. Then this is good. She mentioned the final project, okay. So I'm talking here by so. For this session for Buddha resume, I want to focus for the fresh grad kind of resume. Okay. Uh, so uh, we will put aside the experience kind of resume. But for now, let's focus on the fresh grad type of resume. Uh. All right. And yeah, see, you she put the accomplishment. So you can put also what is your accomplishment? What is your achievement? Okay, are you a dean list? Uh you, do you receive a dean list award? How many semester your dean list? So you can put that, no problem. So, are you been awarded for anything, anything, anything? Uh, okay. And work experience is good to put also, all right, if you have. So, if you don't have, because you are you, you are currently studying, so you don't have any work experience. Uh, I know some people, they are putting their part-time experience, right? Like when they are working in any restaurant or any retail, uh, industry or maybe they just do uh, uh, part-timers in any of the companies uh, for me it's good also to put all right but you have to know uh, if you feel that your work experience could giving a value to the job that you apply go ahead you can put it but you need to make sure that you use the right word okay I didn't say when you work as a barista or you work uh, in the retail industry as a cashier or so on. It's not good. No. It's still your experience. Because why? As a cashier, it will train you to be a very meticulous and detailed kind of person, right? It's also a uh, show on how is your, uh, you know, uh, your uh, how you manage your jobs in a very high pressure situation. Right, so these are the things: is the skills, and also your experience. So for me, you twist the words for your job description. For example, here she said, uh, okay, uh, uh, she she she's currently uh, she previously is working lah, and also she's an internship, but she don't have a part timer. But if let's say, uh, she you you this is considered like we put as a contoh, uh, as a part timer lah. Eh? The, she works in a bank, for example, as a cashier, for example, or any any retail shops or, or supermarket or what. <laughs> so use the right words to attract the readers. Okay? Use the right words. So at least bila apa, orang baca, macam, oh, this candidate, even though they kerja cashier, tapi actually they buat filing, they buat uh, reports, you know, they Maksudnya, the part of the event team ke so on. So, put all the significant events. Maksudnya, ada event-event yang penting yang you pernah buat masa kerja tu, put that. So that, people will know that, okay, you are actually a multitask. You are able to do more than one job. So, doesn't mean that, uh, what I mean, do can do more than one job is, mean you are a multitasker lah. 
Okay, so you're able to adapt with the job. So that's the most important part. Okay, so, so since you don't have any experience, it's okay. You, you don't have to put if you don't have. Okay, but more focus on what is your achievement during your universities. Okay, uh, so, so these are the things that you need to put. And also, you can bring out what are the skills that you have. Okay. So she put here, she has a leadership skill, networking skill, interpersonal communication, and so on, public speaking. Uh, so these are the things that you need to make sure when the interviewer asks you, you know how to answer it. Because they will still refer you to that since you don't have any work experience. Okay? So that's the most important part. Make sure that you know what you are putting in and... Um, and, and the details of it, you need to make sure that you are uh, aware of it, okay? So language also she put, okay? That's good. And certification. <laughs> so basically, she has identified and segregate all the items in different, different way. So certification, they put certified. Accomplishment, they put certified. Uh, project, they put certified. Activities, they put certified. So that's, that's give... Uh, uh, a good impression to the hiring manager or recruiter to review uh, all the items and the background of this candidate. Okay. And lastly, advisable also to put reference. Lah. So reference in your case is your lecturer. Lah. Okay. Don't put your family members because they are not the professional uh, referees that we could check uh, because somehow it could create a bias. Lah. Honestly, it could create a bias if if anything, someone who's very close to you. But unless it's a professional referee, then okay, that's fine. Professional mean your colleagues or your line managers, your managers, your supervisor, okay, your lecturers. So that's considered a professional referee. Okay. So I think uh, these are one of the sample that I will show. Next one, I want to show so this is one of the participants uh, profile uh, that, sh that share with me, okay? Uh, so what happened is, uh, so Nur Muhammad Fitri bin Abdul Jama, thank you so much. Uh, you are you are brave enough to share your profile and uh, take it as an improvement okay some of the thing is good that you put already uh, inside this uh, so some things that I want to comment uh, your education part is clear enough that's very good all right you also uh, <laughs> putting in details uh, the period uh, what you have uh, even you put your your uh your your result as well okay uh diploma as well and uh your degree so only thing is during your time in usim you should also uh you know i would encourage you put the months but but if let's say there much um too many things inside there you can put a uh, yes also that should not be an issue so this is considered good Right. Uh, sometimes the the selection of words also you need to be very so eh. Maksudnya you kena make sure you guna perkataan yang sesuai dan uh, unique lah. Okay. Uh, so contoh macam degree. Okay. Still in study. So it could be a better words that you can put. I believe um, uh, pres present ataupun ongoing. Okay, so that's the keywords lah. So, sometimes ada keyword ni you tak perlu nak tulis panjang-panjang. I mean, bila you nak explain, people dah tahu, okay, ongoing. So, okay lah. People tahu you still study. Alright? Ha. So, kalau contoh work experience tu, contoh you letak tahun 2023 sampai you tulis letak present. Ataupun uh, ongoing ke contoh. Tapi normally people will put present lah. Ha. Okay? So you work experience, so you are the internship experience, okay? That's good. So you already added, uh, I mean, itemize what you are doing during your internship. So also that's good thing. 
Okay, and period, uh, since internship is just a few months, right? So I believe better to put from when to when. Because people will never know that. How long is your internship? Is it one year? When you put 2022, it's only one year? No? Or it could be three to four months, kind. So just uh, next time, just uh, put a month, how many months? Because it's short a period of time. Okay. Uh, and then you also have a part time. Uh, last time, uh, uh, or maybe you 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 still uh, working uh, as a part timer now in Alisan. So also put a period, even though it's a part time. Yeah, just put a period so people know that are you currently still working as a part time, or you already left your part time. So, and and people want to know also Okay, uh, because reason being why period is is important because. The hiring managers or the company wants to know when you can join us. So that's why period is also need to make it very clear. Okay. Uh, and you also mentioned what are the job that you do during Alisan. Okay. Alisan. Okay, good. And skills. All right. So this is skills that you put your language skills. Lah. And also what you can do. Yeah. Poster and graphic editing. Microsoft Word and PowerPoint. So, so. Yeah, this these are the thing and good. Also, you put your level of your your proficiency. I mean, your your level of your skills. Okay, that's a good thing also, right? Because this is since this is a one pager, so of course, uh, you cannot put so much wording inside here. Uh, only thing is, if you still have uh, things that you want to put, please try to adjust some of the fonts and also your size of pictures so on. So at least you can have a better space to maximize your space in your CV. Okay. So at least this could help you to put more uh, importance or key highlights that you want to put in your CV uh, or resume. I put it as, as a resume. Yeah. Okay. So your profile. So I guess this is your, uh, your, your summary, the profile summary. Okay. That's good. So basically you mentioned about this, this, this. Uh, and you are currently studying in degree, okay? Financial background, where most of my family has a special background, okay? You mean financial background? What is financial background? Financial experience or, okay, so maybe something that need to put in the, in the proper way. Lah. So that's fine. Okay, so you put your interest, okay? Uh, what is your uh, expectation as well? I'm currently further my study, okay. Right. Cool. So you put your contacts, phone, email, uh, here, okay. Uh, and your hobbies, okay. So hobbies is something that I would say uh, optional to put, but in your case, that's fine. You can put that as part of your activities lah, or your hobbies, okay. So hobbies ni, dia kategori macam activities lah. So you, apa you punya ni, so you can put together lah. Uh, tapi kalau you nak segregate pun hobby saja pun okay tak ada masalah. Because this is shows who you are and and uh, because sometimes people put hobbies ni ada orang cakap oh just simply put no. Sometimes people like me or uh, people in industry we thought that okay you have your hobbies so what kind of your hobbies? Swimming, badminton, uh, adventuring, hiking. So you are an outdoor person. So means that you are a very active kind of person. So you tak adalah bila bekerja nanti you duduk depan PC, duduk di depan laptop. So you tak you tak join the event with other you tak interact with people. So basically that's kind of attitude and also personalities that people will look at you. Yeah, because sometimes bila you letak all these things, people will have a different kind of understanding or imagination about you. Yeah, bukan bukan judgmental. Yeah, but it's kind of people we know who you are, what type of person are you? Okay, because nowadays it's all about attitude. Yeah, if you go for internship, it's all about attitude. How keen are you to learn? Is it for the sake of just finishing the study, or you want some things to gain from your internship experience, for example? Yeah, so these are the things that I think, uh, yeah, uh, for me. Overall, uh, it's considered good, okay? But something that you need to put, uh, please make sure that it's very uh, clear, okay? And 
I'm not pretty sure. One more thing, sorry. I'm not pretty sure why you put this personal financial executive because uh, I didn't see anything in your work experience. Or is it because you want to apply for this? Uh, if you want to apply for this role, for me, don't put it here. But you can put it in your summary. What is your interest, for example? Okay. But if, let's say, you do a uh, part-timer as a, a financial consultant, for example, uh, then okay, you can put it here. Otherwise, please put in your work experience. Lah. Because sometimes people will, will try to uh, relate. Uh, anything related with this personal financial executive? Is it you want to apply for a job for this? Or are you currently work for this role? Or what? So, so these are the things that people we have a different thought of you when you you uh, put uh, this part. Okay. Uh, uh, before 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 we move to next person, I think uh, the background itself, uh, the coloring is okay. Only that when you put a wording like this, please make sure your background is clear enough for the wordings to be read. Okay. Because honestly, for me, it's a bit difficult for me to read it because it's, I was disturbed with this background. So, kalau boleh, cuba cari background yang clear dan maksudnya bukan ber, ber, bercampur-campur. So, kalau you nak satu kind of background untuk professional summary, put <coughs> satu background saja, clear background kat belakang. Tak kira lah warna apa. Tapi... <coughs> Yang penting, tak ada corak yang boleh mengganggu the wording tu. Okay. Clear? Right? Good. So, uh, thank you so much, Nur Muhammad Fitri, uh, for your briefness of sharing your CV. Uh, just just my advice, uh, just change uh, as, per I, as per mentioned just now. Eh? Okay. Right. So, let's move to the next part. Okay, next candidate. So, the style is different pula. Gambar dekat kanan. So, atas tu dia letak nama dia apa semua in contact details lah. So, basically dia letak dia punya contact details, nama semua kat sini. Kat sini dia letak gambar dia. Okay. So, basically and bawah daripada tu, she put objective. So, apa ni objective? Okay. Basically, objective ni is same lah. That professional summary, uh, the summary of yourself. Uh, so, so good also, dia letak objective because kita tahu apa yang dia cari. Because personal summary ni, professional summary, objective summary, uh, it can be anything actually, to be honest, if you ask me. But, when you put that uh, section, people will read and people will understand what are you looking at. And what is your background? So at least this will give a first impression before they go to the next part of your resume. Okay. Uh, so basically, they put uh, all the details to lah yang at least, at least people understand, okay, what is he looking out? Okay, dear, dear, uh, what kind of person is, is he? Uh, and also, uh, yeah, uh, and background dia apa? So the fresh grad uh, in, in finance, looking to kickstart any career in in the, in the industry. So that's clear enough. We know what he's looking at. Okay. Then sama juga information kat sini letak, dia punya phone number, email, address. Okay. Talking about address, you boleh letak. Tapi kalau you tak selesa to put the address, because sometimes people will feel unsafe to put the address. Yeah. Uh, it's not because of what, because of maybe it could uh, because you takut nanti takut you punya resume uh, the abuse atau disalah guna kan, because yalah, uh, not all people that we can trust in this world, it's just that whatever that we can protect from our side, kita protect dulu, okay, tapi of course, ada certain information you kena bagi consent lah, I mean but some people, they don't because for example, I'm sharing my, my experience. 
people in Europe, in US, sometimes they don't share their personal information. They just share their number, their name, uh, it could be their email address, but sometimes they don't put the contact numbers for the sake of, uh, you know, for the purpose of safety, for example. Tapi, uh, some of the some of them are okay to share. So it depends because kat sana, sometimes Europe they have their own law lah, human rights law semua tu. So tak semua benda yang mereka akan share with the anonymous ataupun outsiders yang mereka tak kenal. Okay, so different country have a different different law. So that's why sometimes you jangan terkejut kalau contoh ada orang daripada UK, ada orang daripada daripada Netherlands, daripada US, tiba-tiba uh, contoh kalau you kerja Indonesia lah. Eh. Uh, apply the job, dia bagi work experience je dengan nama, tu je. Okay, maybe dia put email lah, that's all. Tapi dia tak bagi tahu dia punya address apa semua. Address tu macam cakap dia tak wajib. Tapi sometimes maybe dia put the lo location pun dia tak bagi tahu kadang-kadang dia daripada mana. Uh, tapi sometimes bila dia letak ada reference ke apa benda tu yang membuatkan ataupun education dia, you tahu oh dia belajar kat sini, kat sini. Dan company dia sekarang tu dekat location mana-mana. So that's why people will understand, know that okay, where you came from and apa semua lah. Okay. So kat sini dia letak education, also good. Okay. And plus dia letak dia punya achievement juga. Boleh juga letak kat sini. Kalau tak banyak, boleh letak lah. Tapi kalau you banyak, I I recommend you put another section untuk you punya achievement dan juga awards lah. Tapi kalau contoh dia letak satu je, dia ada satu je, satu je lah tak apalah. Uh, okay. And uh, the period tu pun okay, right? Uh, work experience. So kalau dia ada work experience, uh, dia letak lah. And be precise on your work experience juga. Kalau contoh you ada internship punya experience, contoh eh. Lepas you ada internship. So you letak you punya internship experience. Kalau tak ada internship experience, you ada part time, letak part time. Kalau you rasa that's valuable for you. Kalau tak ada, tak payah letak. Tak apa. Okay. Uh, just put your achievement, apa, uh, your, your activities, your project. Okay, um, and uh, yeah, so dia letak achievement and involvement. So dia pernah join apa, uh, apa, apa dia punya activities. Uh, so these are the things that is very important because uh, at least you have joined an events, okay, and you are very active kind of person. So people tahu, orang tahu yang you memang Bukan jenis duduk diam lah. Bukan jenis yang passive, you know. You're active, you're okay to interact with people. So, these are will reflect your personality and credibility as well. Okay. Uh, nowadays, I I found that most of the fresh grad CV, they don't remember banyak letak achievement involvement. So, I guess in your university pun, I believe your lecturers pun encourage you, kan? Uh, even the management also encourage you to join the extracurricular activities okay so janganlah duduk dalam bilik je just so sometimes when you study tu i know it's stress so you have to relief uh, sometimes joining sports pun okay but kalau you join the activities uh, this is my my advice lah eh. uh, it could release you daripada you stress ataupun daripada you punya pressure so bila you ada akal yang sihat kan uh, So, badan you automatically akan sihat juga. And I drink a lot of drink of clean water lah. So, that's also the most important tempat. So, at least with all this achievement yang you involve, you rasa senang nak belajar dan senang nak masuk lah. Honestly, if you ask me. Uh, put aside on the personal punya uh, ni, things. Uh, so, for me is at least this achievement involvement uh, could give you a big value in your resume. So, bila you, walaupun you tengok, dia cakap, they join school attack program with business. They join je. Bukannya dia organize pun. Bukannya dia uh, menang apa-apa pun. They just join. But, this is something that you can portray yourself based on your activities that you're joining. Uh, so, sometimes, uh, some, some, I think, kalau macam fam, dia ada Uh, panggil apa eh? uh, Final year project tu uh, Alah, can't remember Akil help me uh, The Final year project 
yeah. I said yes, I said, I said. All right, thank you. Uh, so I said, so that's because I, as my understanding, FAM je ada, ada FYP, eh, final project. Uh, tapi fakulti lain, mostly kena buat uh, thesis apa semua. So you should be lucky, ya. Eh? You tak perlu nak buat research apa semua. Uh, but you have to do this kind of project lah. So it really helps you to to elevate your value in the market when you go for internship and looking for job. So I guess these are the involvement that uh, you can put in your achievement yeah, for activities. Skills, they're identified in a few criteria. So they are the technical skills, they are the letter, soft skills, language. Okay, so skills ni, it can be very lah. It can be anything. Yeah, uh, soft skill, it can be like a convincing skills, communication skills. Tahan uh, maki tak payah letak eh. <laughs> so they, they want to say But you can twist it as a able to work under pressure. Yeah, so 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 sometimes the words too, you need to know what is the right word you can put. Yeah? Uh, resilience uh, under pressure. Tengok, resilience under pressure. Maksudnya kalau pentam dia pun dia tak masalah. Okay. Verbal and written communication. So make sure that when you put this part of how to say uh, verbal and written communication is, is very subjective. So, but below verbal too, people only people speak to you only they know how is yours speaking. Uh, I'm not talking about English speaking. Eh. I'm talking about the way how you speak. Uh, sometimes, cara kita bercakap tu is different dengan knowledge yang kita ada. For example, walaupun you tahu English so much, all the vocabs and so on, tapi bila bercakap, mengalanggang, tak smooth. Uh, tak structured. So benda-benda tu is actually a skills. Uh, written skills pun sama, written function. So written ni tak semestinya in in English. It can be in Malay, it can be in Arabic, in any language. So kalau people tengok, for example, kalau you buat written skills in Malay pun, tunggang langgang. Tapi tiba-tiba dalam uh, English, you have a good uh, written skill. So that's some things that people will trigger also lah. Okay, you know, okay. It might good in English, but not in Malay, for example. So, benda-benda tu uh, is very subjective lah. Sometimes bila, bila you ada you join the interview, orang akan tanya benda yang sometimes you tak terfikir pun kan. Uh, but sometimes you could expect lah what are the question that they will ask based on your uh, information in your resume. Okay. And a reference also, he puts lah. So as, as I mentioned just now, if you don't have a people to put a reference, tapa, you, uh, uh, sorry, uh, reference ni you boleh put anyone uh, professionally. Okay, uh, kalau you tak ada siapa-siapa yang you rasa boleh, then you can put your lecturers uh, as a reference. Ataupun sometimes every uh, internship ataupun latihan industry, you all ada supervisor kan? So your lecturer tu, so you can put. Satu nama pun tak apa, tak masalah. At least, And, uh, at least one name should be enough Okay uh, Dan tak perlu banyak lah Kalau you nak put dua, then satu atau dua lah Tak payah sampai tiga, empat Itu you simpan untuk you lah Unless you rasa And pick those who really uh, good referees for you Okay uh, So you can put the details there lah But remember This is Personal Data Protection Act ya. Eh? Remember when you put their personal details, phone number, email, name, you must get their consent. Ask for their permission. Boleh tak, uh, doktor, saya nak minta uh, doktor jadi saya punya referees, saya nak letak dalam uh, resume saya as a reference. Saya cakap, okay, boleh, carry on, sila. Then baru you buat. Okay, kalau tiba-tiba you letak nama, apa, uh, uh, apa nama, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Umi ke, Dr. Umi Sawa ke, ke ataupun uh, your, your dekan kan, tiba-tiba you letak nama dia, tiba-tiba then ada orang buat reference call, reference check, kata eh siapa ni saya tak kenal pun student ni, contoh, dia tak tanya saya pun, ha, so benda tu sebenarnya is reflects on our uh, credibility lah and and also our responsibility 
uh, and, and accountability because you need to check with that person first. Ask permission dulu, baru you boleh letak. Okay, sebab so, benda-benda ni very sensitive. So, personal details ni. So, uh, kalau you pun you tak suka kan, orang ada nombor telefon you, suddenly call, dia tanya benda-benda yang you tak tahu dan you tak selesa lah masa I. So, better get a permission first before you put the details there. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is for the third candidates lah. So far, these are the things that uh, for me, you can take it as a whatever you feel good for you, you can take. But if you don't feel uh, suitable or not really related to you, then you can uh, you can remove it lah from your details. Okay. So the fourth candidate. Okay. I saja biarkan address ni terbuka sebab dia tak letak um, full address. Okay. So reason being uh, why I buka sebab I just nak share dengan you. Address you still can put where is your location currently. Contoh kalau you tak selesa nak letak you dekat bandar Tasik Putri, Rawang, Selangor. You letak je you dekat Rawang, Selangor. Ataupun you letak je dekat Selangor. Pun tak ada masalah. Even you letak Malaysia pun tak ada masalah. Okay. People will still know you are in Malaysia. Tapi people will still, still check lah. Where are you in Malaysia? Okay. Dekat Nilai ke? Dekat KL ke? Dekat mana? Shah Alam ke? Okay. So these are the things that uh, you still can put lah. Okay. Uh, and as I said, up to you. You nak letak, letak, tak letak pun tak apa. Tapi for me, Uh, for internship purposes, I would recommend you to put the uh, not full address but your your location. I mean where you are currently. Kalau you rasa you nak letak alamat apa tempat kampung contoh you from Kuantan, okay, Pahang, you nak letak letak Kuantan Pahang then for me that's fine. People will never know where is Kuantan is. People, people will not find where is Kuantan. So people know you are in Kuantan. So bila ada internship placement in KL or Selangor or Negeri Sembilan, people will call you. Are you okay to travel or to relocate to this this area, this area? Uh, then it's easy for people to 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 know lah uh, where you are. So, so tak adalah dia nak menyus, you susah nak travel apa semua kan. So at least these are the important part. So sama juga, <laughs> dia letak the summary. So dia letak career objective. So it can be any words lah. Eh? career objective, professional summary, summary. Uh, so that's, that's, uh, and it must be concise and detail lah apa yang you cari, uh, what's your background. Uh, so kat sini dia, dia tak letak background lah. Tapi dia put the interest <laughs> and dia beritahu uh, the type of person, personality of, of of this person. Okay. And dia ni pun dah, dia dah start kerja. So basically after internship, dia terus kerja. So basically dia letaklah dia punya work experience, company name, uh, the, the job title, okay. Uh, dia letak temporary, maksudnya contract lah. So this is optional lah. You boleh letak atau you tak boleh letak, it's up to you. But sometimes uh, people will letak sebab because people nak tahu, uh, because sometimes bila you work, uh, your, your job ni on contract basis, dia punya notice period kadang apa pendek so contoh sebulan atau dua minggu contoh macam tu so for new company to hire you dia rasa okay dia boleh masuk cepat so it's also useful but for me uh, it's up to you if you want to put on up okay temporary so by right uh, it should put as a contract lah uh, not temporary even though because the 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 official terms ataupun the general terms that we use kalau you work on part time atau uh, contract basis ni temporary tu is for me is, is to avoid lah to use uh, because sometimes they tak uh, how to say ah because sometimes when the, the when you is the, the selection of words tu pun dah menunjukkan your Uh, credibility and your understanding about the communication and written skills as well. So sebab tu uh, for me, it's good to change to contract ataupun part-time. Kalau part-time, part-time lah. Uh, that's the the terms that normally we use. Part-time 
ataupun contract uh, kalau internship internship lah uh, normally kalau internship you akan tulis internship je you tak ada tulis title macam tu tapi ada certain people um, bila dia in this company dia buat internship tapi untuk nak bagi detail lagi dia internship as what internship dash finance department atau internship dash uh, engineering department accounting department ataupun HR department business department that's 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 up to you because you want to make sure that people understand uh, where are you at kan uh, and uh, dekat sini pun dia letak period okay that's good start with the months so i would advise you please put months ya yeah? kalau you dah ada work experience please put months sebab people boleh calculate how long are you working in that particular company because why because they want to know contoh if you put only years you start 2019 sampai contoh that job require five years of experience kan so kalau five years experience from today it should be 2019 right tapi the hiring manager want to know is it full five years they're working in this particular job or less it's just a four for four years plus plus saja so be specify on the period as well put the month kalau contoh dia start daripada january 2019 sampai present okay so it's consider memang lima tahun lah ah for example okay tapi kalau dia letak 2019 dan sekarang present kita tak tahu berapa lama so it's hard for us to to for people to make a decision it just that kalau you boleh bagi detail as detail as that that will be enough because benda tu tak banyak pun you tak perlu letak description long description but just a march 2023 to august 2023 so people know berapa lama and uh, dia pun ada letak part time juga so bila part time ah uh, tengok dia tulis greetings customer and paying attention to what customer wants offers and introduce new menu to customers soft customer complaint so basically this she shows what is the uh, job that she did and also what are the value that we can see from the job itself so maksudnya kalau dia pernah buat kerja ni so basically kalau dia kerja dengan uh, frontline frontline ni macam contoh orang yang uh, customer care okay so dia very uh, relatable lah so dia ada experience lah dia pernah face that kind of situation so she has the experience so basically benda tu yang sebenarnya uh, give the value bila you letak all the items okay so kalau you tengok kat sini dia start part time okay lah part time is part time then bank ah kalau you tengok sini eh dia letak part time cashier March 2018 to July 2021 so maksudnya sepanjang dia kat sini dia memang bekerja lah okay eh, tapi as part time Cumanya kalau you tengok balik dia sebenarnya tengah study diploma so dia bela- bela- bekerja sambil belajar lah so that's that's the things that we want to know as well from the recruiter side okay so uh, basically uh, she provide the good uh, I would say uh, uh, details and description about what she 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 did okay so macam I cakap, kalau you nak letak description ni Kalau nak guna present tense, present tense saja okay. Kalau you nak letak past tense, letak past tense je Standardize, standardize, standardize Jangan campur-campur, pijak past tense, pijak future, pijak present ha. uh, Campur aduk, so so uh, just make it standard So easy for people to understand and uh, Okay, so dia pun letak educational background Uh, the different part uh, so okay so that's that's a good thing okay so kalau you tengok eh dia ni bachelor of business i mean finance so basically dia buat finance tapi dia start uh, kerja lepas internship dia buat benda lain so some sometimes why uh, dia boleh dapat this kind of opportunity for me it's all about what you did during your internship and as well as your personality and also your traits lah traits tu yeah. 
personality lah. So people will value and also assess you during the interview based on your experience and exposure. Okay. Of course, communication skills too is very important. So it's about to be like you buat internship. You get and grab the most uh, opportunity as much as you can. So but from that time, you will learn from the experienced people and also from the expert. So spend your time in during your internship. So but bila masih internship ni lah, it's a first step for you to jump into the working world. So but so but apa? That's where you will interact with the people and you will find a lot of characters and personality in one particular workplace. So then you know how to deal with it lah and learn from it. So your period now is another level of learning. Okay, currently is more on uh, one way of learning or very, I would say, a theoretical or formal kind of learning. But when you step in the working world, it's different kind of learning that you need to do. Okay. Uh, yeah. So hence, that's why grab as much as opportunity that you have during the internship. Uh, and they mentioned you got all the education details. Lah. So, tapi kat sini, dia tak itemizekan dia punya achievement. So, dia terus letak under dia punya election program. Which is for me, it's okay. Only that, kalau you put, because my preference is, kalau you letak in your achievement, so people can see a lot of achievement you can see. You know? So, okay, okay. So, bila you letak kat sini, it's still okay. Uh, should be okay. Alright? Cuma, uh, from my preference, I will see it, put it in the different section. So, at least, people can, uh, easy for us to see. Right? Uh, personal skills, okay, dia letak macam ni. Uh, so, then computer skills, different pula. So, dia letak dia punya level. Okay. Then language pun, dia letak different. And reference. So, basically, uh, it takes about two pages lah for her to, to, to create this resume. Okay. Uh, because, they give a space, you know, for, for the reader to read. Okay, and also, dia pun banyak juga lah detail kat sini. So, kalau boleh, kalau you boleh buat simplify as you can, that will be very good. Uh, especially for the fresh grads type of resume. Eh? But if you can't, you still can make it longer, one or two to pages. Uh, but make sure you put the right information and uh, precise lah. Okay? Don't too many wordings sangat. So, sometimes bila you too many wordings, people are can get tends to lost their attention. So, bila dah lost attention ni, macam you baca <laughs> uh, buku juga lah kan. Some of the books tu, kalau you baca uh, buku yang banyak wording tu, you bosan kan. Betul tak? Tu yang bosan nak study, tak boleh nak focus apa semua. But sometimes, if come with the keywords, uh, bold, uh, for example, or pictures, so it could attract people, you know. Uh, so that's, that's a kind of attraction that you need to put lah. Okay. Uh, right. So this is uh, this candidate uh, type of resume. And lastly, uh, this guy is quite simple, I would say. Uh, they start also sama. They start gambar kat sini and the personal details kat sini, atas ni. Then personal summary dia letak. Okay. Uh, dia, dia, dia tak buat banyak sangat section lah. Dia buat one straight line je. Okay. Sama macam this this lady jugalah. Dia buat one straight line juga. Okay. So people tu uh, sebab sometimes ada ada hair major dia pun banyak kerenah dia. Dia ada dia punya style dia juga. Kadang dia tak suka tengok tepi sana. Okay, sana. Macam serabut untuk dia. Ada, ada yang okay. Ada yang ada yang nak tengok semua dalam satu page je. Ha, cuma macam-macam perangkat. So Uh, itu based on luck juga lah eh. uh, tapi luck, luck pun you ha we have to have a skills and strategy so at least kalau pun you letak kiri kanan atas bawah macam tu is one page so make it attractive lah senang nak baca so tak adalah orang pening nak baca 
Uh, tapi if you want buat one pager macam ni pun, it's still okay. Okay. So dia pun letak the summary work experience dia pernah ada. Ya. Yeah. Um, uh, and also dia punya part time, right? Uh, period ah uh, macam ni dia tengok letak period bila part time dia. So kita tahu lah uh, dia buat part time ni masa tengah study ke atau lepas study ke atau masa semester break. Uh, so people boleh agak-agak lah kan. Uh, so dan dia letak education dia pun sama dia letak awards dekat sini, achievement dekat sini. Okay and also apa subject uh, ataupun uh, subject kan subject yang dia belajar. Okay. Um, For me, this is optional, tapi good to have also uh, because it depends on what type of job ataupun um, application yang you try you, you buat lah. Contoh kalau internship, you nak cari finance, uh, it's good to have, okay. Tapi jangan terlalu panjang lah macam ni sampai diletak kod subject tu sekali. Uh, sebab I imagine tu bukan nak tahu pun you nak buat kod apa kan. At least you uh, put generally you uh, study in uh, taxation, forensic accounting, uh, kan? So they don't know. Oh, okay, dia pernah belajar benda benda benda, benda. right? So <coughs> basically, kalau you buat sama sikit pun tak apa, ataupun you put related subject macam ni pun okay. So tak uh, subject name tu, uh, audit and insurance, forensic accounting, that that's good enough, okay? and then dia letak dia punya CGPA also also good so one 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 recommendation that i want to to uh, to to propose to you also is uh, please put your CGPA as well especially bila you uh, nak apply for job after internship yeah because sometimes <coughs> kalau you apply for management training program eh? because sometimes certain company dia punya management training program ni dia very structured tau sebab dia memang susah nak dapat. So dia very selektif. Dia nak orang yang CGPA 3.5 ke atas, 3.6 ke atas. So bila you apply, you letak CGPA. So people will know, okay, you sebenarnya layak. Then people will straight away shortlist for the first round. Untuk selection tu. Tapi bila you tak letak, then this is my personal experience. Eh. Bila you tak letak you punya CGPA, you will put on KIV side because we need to check first okay because dia because kita nak review CV ni bukan 10 20 CV beratus beribu yang apply so in order for us to save time kita akan pilih those who actually yang uh, is visible first to us okay then second kita akan tengok balik those yang yang kita kita put uh, KIV tu kita put aside on the list So kita go through balik dan kita kena call candidate tu tanya okay ni ni. So bukan kita tak call candidate, kita call. It's just that bila you ada resume with the full information and the right information is give a good impression to the hiring manager atau recruiter to shortlist you for the next round. So this is also psychological kind of things lah. So bila you menyenangkan hidup orang, orang pun akan senangkan hidup you juga. So for us, We always want to give an opportunity for all people to apply the job. Tapi you also kena tolong lah untuk orang yang nak shortlistkan uh, candidate tu, especially you, untuk menyenangkan hidup dia supaya dia tahu apa you buat dan you dah letak all the information. Maksud I, you tak perlu panjang-panjang too many wordings. Tapi you have to know what are the important words yang you kena letak dalam tu. So macam dia ni, It's good dia letak CGPA kan. So, bila dia nak apply for job nanti untuk graduate management training pun contohnya, yang requirement dia perlukan people 3.5 and above, so dia dah layak for the first selection process. Right? And of course, the next one is next one lah. So, at least for the first selection process, you dah layak. So, that's the reason sometimes why you are not be shortlisted or not call up for an interview. Is because some of the resume or information you letak tu is not there, and you have to know you are competing with hundreds, thousands of applicants for that position. So in order to menyenangkan hidup you, memudahkan your application, 
Uh, of course, everything is all about uh, recipe. Lah, eh? okay. uh, it's just that uh, when you do it in a proper way, inshallah, there will be a good pass for you. Lah. Uh, so you have to learn on the right way to make a resume. What I'm saying today is mostly on my personal experience and so what happened in that street. But you also still can search up in Google so a lot of tips, everything that you can. Uh, you know, find out what are best uh, good tips lah also. But in my context, especially in Malaysia, so these are the things that actually normally what we will really see. Okay. So I've been with the multinational company, uh, local companies, uh, GLC as well. So the criteria and the requirements is different, different, different. Okay. Some of the company or some of the hiring managers, they are okay. Uh, with the CV that you have. But some of the hiring managers, they are very particular and meticulous. You nak tengok one by one. Okay, apa yang you buat. So, kalau tak ada the information, reject. Because dia pun ada banyak kerja dia nak buat. So, to to save her time or his time, she will go and look at the only the important parts. So, that's where you need to make sure what are the important parts that is required is there in your resume, right? So, at least when you apply, people dah terang-terang, contoh eh. Okay, when you put a person somebody in, this is very good. Then people we know, oh, they need other experience, how many years, okay, in this, in this, in this system, in this system, uh, they pernah buat ni. Okay, good. Then people will have a interest to go through all together. Because bila you dah letak, you tak ada ni, you tak nampak clear sangat. So, people macam nak tengok, Okay, is 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 uh, giving hard time or more time for people to understand apa dia buat sebenarnya ni? Apa dia buat sebenarnya? Ah, okay. So, hence, that's give an impact in terms of the psychologically. Okay lah. Okay, I've been looking at the project. Okay, did it. So, so that's the impression lah, I would say. Uh, basically, there's no right or wrong, but you have to go with the proper uh, way ataupun best way to to build up the resume. So, kalau you tengok kat sini, dia pun ada buat uh, IT proficiency, language proficiency. So, sometimes wording tu pun a bit vary and different. Uh, and better for you to learn from now, especially those, uh, since you belum lagi nak intern sih kan, you are third year, second year, first year student, please make sure you are equipped with a lot of IT skills. And also, Uh, hard skills. Hard skills ni macam contoh communication, event management, writing skills. Uh, like, uh, mostly involvement with the with the face-to-face -face engagement. Uh, okay. Uh, so these are could help you in terms of your skills and develop uh, your value as well. So at least you are valuable in the market. When people see your resume, people feel, oh, okay. So, you actually, ada uh, pernah buat ni, tahu ni, tahu ni. And, and sometimes the job is required for you to do that. For example, kalau this guy, tengok lah, skills dia, dia pernah buat Outlook. Which is currently, most of the company guna Microsoft Outlook. So, it's easy. Canva. Canva, I think, uh, this is not my generation lah eh. Canva. <laughs> Canva is, is new for me. But, dia macam PowerPoints. Honestly, I never try Canva. Tapi, most of the fresh grads that I met, they said, Kamba is easy. Kamba is easy. That, okay, that's fine. Uh, I'm yet to explore, but I want to explore also. So, these are the things that could add value for me. CapCut. Okay, CapCut is something, is a uh, apps untuk buat video, I think. Yeah. So, and that's, that's also a value. Because sometimes when you need to do a video, maybe for some event or so on, you have the skills. So, these are the, the hidden skills that sometimes, People won't realize it's actually valuable in the working world sometimes. Okay, and also additional information the letter is a driving license, process on transport is this is a good to have lah. Kalau you still have a space to put, no problem you can put. And sometimes people will put notice period juga, kan? macam saya cakap tadi. Um, expected salary and current salary. As a fresh grad, I don't recommend you to put because sometimes. You don't have any reference of your previous pay lah, unless 
you feel that you are valuable and you feel that you able to convince the the panel on why you need to be paid and this much then carry on you can put but for us because some some company they have their own pay scale you know how much they pay for the fresh grad and also they will look at into some of the consideration and guidelines why we need to pay the people at this much at this much so that's my part we will see at your stage at your level why you need to be paid this much this much sometimes can be sometimes cannot so it also depends yeah so and lastly put reference lah okay so i guess uh that's all from my end for the bedah resume session i hope that you are able to learn you know uh and get some things from my presentation today uh and, and i really appreciate on your attention so i guess um yeah uh that's all for our session for bedah resume and uh over to you akil for our next session can we have a break for a while before we go to the next session is it okay uh so sure mr okay can you give me about 2 3 minutes right sure okay, so, so in the in the meantime uh all participants that have any question you guys can uh get ready with your question before we begin to the next uh q&a session so i hope that everyone can be prepared with the question that you want to ask or if you have any problem uh opening your microphone or anything you can simply just uh put your questions on the chat box and i'll try and see which question and raise your question to mr hafiz so in the meantime you guys can prepare uh and make sure that you guys remember to put and introduce your name and your faculty of course before you ask your questions all right so uh let's wait for a while uh for jafis to get uh give him a little break so we'll continue around 11 uh 12 minutes uh and we get we we'll continue with the uh, q&a sessions
uh, Encik Hafiz, uh, is Encik Hafiz ready for uh, the Q&A session? Uh, yes, okay. Anytime. Alright. Uh, before I move on with the participants' question, I have a question uh, to ask Mr. Hafiz. Okay. Uh, in your experience of reviewing uh, resumes, all right, uh, if you were given a set of resumes, uh, what is the first key point that you, you will look at the resume which give you a first impression of, of the candidate? Okay. Right. Thank you, Akhil, for your question. Uh, so you need to understand that when the hiring manager or recruiter like me looking for a candidate, it's all about the job requirements that we need to find, okay? So what type of things that we are looking at? So personally, for me, based on my experience, <clears throat> for example, if I know the position to is applying for accounting jobs, Shanto, executive accounting. So what is the key things that I need to know must have for this role before I uh, look for a candidate? So, whenever the candidate apply, first thing first, what I look at is kalau dia ada personal summary, that will be a good thing. Because in your personal summary, you akan tengok the background of this candidate. How many years dia ada. I mean, I'm talking about the experienced people lah. Eh? Tapi kalau fresh graduates, okay, they line pula, I punya approach. Okay, so bila fresh graduates, you are looking for fresh graduate for finance or maybe marketing or maybe uh, engineering. First thing first, what I look at is uh, the education. So that must be clear. Tapi personal summary too, you still can put there. You still can put there on the top, right? Only that when you are applying for a fresh grad jobs or maybe an internship, you need to uh, arrange the section too properly. Lah. For example, if you're applying for internship. So the second thing that I will see is your education. If you are the personal summary, then okay. Uh, I will, uh, that's the first thing. Second part, I can think of your education. So basically, kalau your information to correct and meet with our requirements, that's where you will be shortlist lah. Uh, tapi kalau the information too is very difficult to find, hard to find. So sometimes it could trigger me that something need to be improved lah for this profile. Okay. Uh, even though you uh, have a related experience, uh, sorry, related uh, requirement that what we're looking at, but sometimes it also could trigger your kind of personality and job, how you manage your job and so on. So how meticulous are you? You know how how you make uh, you make sure that all the important things is there. How you prioritize all the things. So everything reflects lah, sebenarnya. Eh? Um, because you have to know nowadays people are very competitive. You see you are compete with other uh, universities, right? Uh, and in my experience, when I was first start uh, my job, eh, you see me macam orang tak kenal. So how you want to showcase yourself to the public, to the market? So by doing your first impression of, by portray your resume, this is give your first, first impression of who you are, okay? So that's why the things that I will look at, it will be different kind of things. Kalau position ni, experience, I can tengok the work experience dulu. Tapi kalau fresh graduates, I will go with the education first. Okay? Then baru I tengok the achievement, the involvement, activities, and so on. Lagi-lagi kalau that position tu perlukan uh, requirement dia, uh, ada certain CGPA minimum. So that's where I also can take up. So please make sure from now moving forward, kalau you know what resume untuk you punya internship nanti atau fresh graduate, fresh graduate, put your education 
as a second level lah. Oh, this is my advice lah. Okay, and then bawah education tu, you letak uh, the CGPA. Okay, and kalau ada macam tadi dia pun ada letak sikit subject apa dia related subject. So letak pun tak apa sikit apa. Sebab your resume is fresh graduate resume. So you still have a lot of space in one pager. So tak apa, letak. So kalau you nak buat one pager kind of style, utilize, optimize all the space dalam tu. Tapi kalau you nak buat dua pager, you buat straight line macam tu. So people is easy people senang untuk orang nak baca. Ah so kalau Contoh, what's the value for you? Macam candidate yang sebelum ni tadi kan, yang last kali tadi, dia letak, dia punya CGPA, uh, dia punya education, uh, in apa, degree in what, uh, CGPA dia berapa. So, kalau dia ada bu- muat, letak muat band berapa. Okay, so people will know, oh, okay, dia ni muat band ni, mer ni, Ui, bagus. Uh, so, these are the things that is additional information which could bring and give a value to you. Uh, why you been shortlisted and why we need uh why you are shortlisted for this role so this must be a strong reason why you've been shortlisted so that, that's the answer for you lah akhil okay is that answerable or you yes that, that satisfied that's, very, that's a very clear explanation thank you okay. Mr. No so uh if you wouldn't mind i hmm. would like to proceed with uh questions from the participants okay yes. so yes. one of the participants is suraya she right. says that hmm. uh If jika struktur resume seseorang tidak teratur, adakah penilai akan reject atau ia tetap akan dibaca kerana isinya lebih penting berbanding strukturnya? So, thank you so much Raya for your question. So, uh, macam saya cakap tadi, uh, is 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 how you structure your resume. Macam mana you nak uh, build your resume tu? You must have a structure. So start dengan apa? Professional summary. Okay, personality is also can. So professional summary. And bila you want to apply for that particular job, is it for internship, fresh grad, atau you are experienced? But if you are fresh grad looking for a job or internship, looking for internship placement, what you must prioritize in your information? So kalau you tak teratur, uh, dia tak reject. Cuma nya. As long as you have all the information, the key information and key highlights there, you still be reviewed and considered as nanya. Cuma nya, the priority tu, they will look at those who have all those information in proper way. Maksudnya, you pun bagi all the information sama dengan first candidate ni. Tapi beza dia, is the first candidate, they, he or she put it in a structured way easy to read, easy to uh, review. Whereas for you, you have that information, all the information, but it's not structured. It's everywhere, lah, I would say. Uh, so better to precise it, put it properly, structure it very well, make it clear for re- uh, reviewer ataupun readers to atau hiring manager to to uh, baca you punya resume. So still, still akan review, okay? That's why I say, of course, kalau you punya requirement to meet, you punya background uh, to meet the requirements, we still review, okay? Because at the end of the day, we want to find the right candidates for that. Uh, to those yang tak meet requirement, bukannya kita tak shortlist, no. Could be there will be a, a better position for them, okay? Might not be suit on what they want lah. Uh, right? Am I answering Suraya? Hopefully it's answering. Please thumb up, it's okay. <laughs> That's a sign lah. So at least I know that I'm answered your question, Suraya. Thank you. So uh, moving on to the next question from Fazrina. Fazrina, right? okay. So Fazrina uh, is a mobile student and she wanna ask Kalan Quick resume macam dalam website Indeed tu kan, efektif ke? Atau it's better to create uh, our own resume? Quick resume eh, sekejap. Uh, which one that you mention quick resume eh? Uh, Because Indeed, if you open Indeed uh, mm-hmm. nowadays, uh, okay. you can access uh, their quick resume is like a 
template that they provide for you. Ah, okay. You just fill in whatever they want and and you will create a quick resume for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, that depends on the job uh, portal. So, but, okay, macam Indeed semua ni is actually an ATS system. Dia macam job portal system lah. So, sometimes they all have their own uh, way ataupun kind of uh, orang cakap tu. Uh, approach yang dia orang buat. So bila dia orang different different star, different different system, dia ada different different way of they want to attract the company or employer. So that's why sometimes it helps to the company untuk uh, orang cakap apa? Mungkin dia buat quick resume tu untuk nak bagi uh, a summary or a glance of uh, what uh, candidate background and uh, experience semua. So basically For me, that's a tools also for you, which could help you to you know be uh, reviewed and shortlisted. So basically, effective is not effective. For me, I would say it's effective because you find the right platform until you apply for a job. Okay, so uh, because bila you put in the job application right in the job portal tu, you pun kena attach punya resume kan. Okay, so that's a different thing. Your resume, your resume, you put. Tetapi sometimes bila dalam job application tu, dia orang dah, uh, dia orang dah ada sistem dia orang yang akan uh, maksudnya simplify the resume to make it easy to uh, view for the recruiters and also hiring manager. So for me, that's that's not uh, not 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 a big issue. So it's a good things as well because you uh, have a tools yang boleh helps you to gain the uh, attraction attracts uh, the employer lah. Okay. So, I I hope I'm answering you, Fazrina. Right. Thank you. Uh, maybe because I think I can I can review the question here. I kill. I just go through on my own lah. Boleh eh? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So Imanina Fatini. Uh, Assalamualaikum. I'm Imanina. I'm from accounting student. Right. Waalaikumsalam. If, if for example the individual does not have any working experience and not active during study how is the resume evaluated okay uh, i do understand some people they are quite uh, passive and also introvert lah i would say yeah. but that's not wrong ataupun yalah for me is not everyone is the same lah eh. if you ask me back in my studies i bukan macam ni I'm very shy person eh. I'm very passive. I selalu duduk belakang. So kalau dekat dalam lecture hall tu, ah uh, yang laki-laki yang kat atas lah. Uh, yang memang bersorak je kat belakang. So that's me last time. So but in order for you to bring yourself forward to how to say ah this is my advice lah. In order for you to bridge your fear, your shyness, sometimes you need to break it, to face it. Sebab bila you face your shyness, your fear, you akan rasa tenang ataupun you won't worry, you, you takkan rasa risau lah. Sebab the moment bila you kena tiba-tiba kena present kat depan atau <laughs> lecture tanya untuk jawab soalan apa semua. So, you tak segugup sebelum ni. And, and the thing is, the resume tu, kalau you betul-betul tak ada, then prove it through your education achievement for example so kalau you rasa you memang betul-betul tak boleh nak join event sangat maksudnya you rasa tak boleh lah kalau I join event nanti I tak boleh nak fokus study tapi kalau I I fokus study I tak boleh nak join event pula so you are kind of person yang memang boleh buat satu benda je dalam satu masa that's fine so focus on one things at one time okay so jangan semua nak bulut bila you tengok kawan you oh, dia join ni lah dia masuk debate lah dia join pergi overseas lah, pergi JISO apa semua tapi saya tak pergi sebab saya tak ni rezeki orang tak sama lagi okay. so do whatever best for you at that right of, at, at that kind of time so kalau you rasa you tak boleh nak go further, move forward do what's the best for you, what you think the best for you and seek also support and help kalau you betul-betul perlukan so it's all about communication lah I would say bila you dalam universiti ni It's a it's a place where you need to be prepared in the real world life. So, bila you tak ready dalam universiti, in real world nanti you akan suffer. So, in order for you to be prepared, 
by any means takkan semua benda kita plan akan jadi kan but at least you ada tahu what to be prepared before kalau benda tu nak jadi tak elok tak elok lah tapi at least coming back to your question it's okay if you don't have tapi kalau you uh, kalau you kalau boleh still you have a time kan uh, join any events any important events and you can put it in your activities or achievement ha. so jangan cakap you tak ada langsung unless you memang tak datang ataupun you tak join that semester lah maksudnya you tak uh, apa enroll for the semester then that's fine tapi kalau you memang for the whole semester sampai habis tadi you complete for me whatever events yang you join pun is still a participation and your activities okay so put that only that you need to know how to craft it make it the right or best words dia you sebenarnya you join je you pergi dengar je talk tu bukan buat apa pun tapi you participate so the wording tu you kena be attractive lah ha dia ada kick orang cakap so kalau orang baca oh you participate ni eh clinic resume eh and also participate in the activity sign benda-benda macam tu faham tak bila orang tengok because how are you is is depends on your profile juga your resume so kalau orang tengok you tak ada apa-apa you letak so people will think hmm, this is just a kind of normal student dia tak ada apa-apa but if you cannot be outstanding at least you try to do something okay manina don't afraid to try new things ya eh? Okay, uh, next one is Amira Amani. Assalamualaikum Cik Hafiz. I'm Amira Amani, accounting student. Is HR do not consider our resume anymore if our resume is treated by the ATS system? Is there any tips from you or method make sure our resume is ATS friendly? All right, that's a good question. Nowadays, a lot of company has used uh, system and ATS is one of it. It's an applicant tracking system. <laughs> Traditional way, you apply guna email or drop resume kan, physically to the company ataupun kalau you pergi ke refer. Nowadays, it's all about ATS, system. You scan QR code, you drop your resume ataupun you send email directly. Tapi, kalau this company using system, for example, kalau you ada LinkedIn account, eh, you apply to one of the company, contoh Shell. Okay, you dah isi semua information, you apply. Sepuluh, you apply. Satu pun tak lekat kan? why there must be a reason right okay any tips i dah bagi tahu tadi try to match your background with the job so if let's say you you have to know so one one of thing what job that you apply kalau you apply the job to memang perlukan experience then you tak ada related of course the ATS tu won't trigger atau capture lah all the wording. So for me, kalau contoh, job tu is for accounting officer, right? And dia punya requirement, fresh graduates is encouraged to apply. Pergi apply. Dan tengok betul-betul what is the first tip, kalau you nak apply job tu, my advice, you tengok, ada tak ada tu fresh grad encouraged to apply? Okay, kalau tak ada, then you tengok balik job requirement tu, berapa lama? Kalau tak ada, then it's hard. Tapi, tak semestinya you tak you reconsider. What you can do is, kalau you ada experience, as contoh, ataupun part time, atau internship. So that's why internship ni is very important because you can put it as part of your experience. Some of the company recognize the internship experience. So you need to make sure whatever you do in internship is give you a value to you for your next job. For example, you buat accounting. Sorry, you study accounting and you internship dalam finance punya department. You buat apa? You buat uh, PNL, you buat uh, cost accounting, you buat uh, macam-macam lah, debit credit semua. Then the requirement of the job, they tengok, oh ni, aku pernah buat dulu ni, aku pernah buat dulu ni. Okay. Then, match it with the job requirements. So for example, they uh, required a person with the PNL. Uh, experience kan. Ah, so you know taklah you ada kenapa PNL apa semua. So benda-benda tu sebenarnya highly chances at least 30 to 40% percent you will capture by ATS. Then you are another in the list. So that's the first thing that you have to know 
you need to make sure that the job requirement or the job description to tally with the the job requirement uh, with your resume sorry with your resume so and i will recommend every time you want to apply for the job you need to edit and amend your resume based on the job itself because don't simply apply because that's why when you simply apply seratus you hantar satu pun tak dapat sebab sebab apa because you don't make with the job of your requirements so that's that that's the tips lah if you want to know how ats work so basically this actually is known globally lah kalau you tanya so for, and for now it's good for you to have uh, to know uh, what are the requirement of the job and craft based on your uh, resume so highly chances at least 50% tu lekat lah untuk di shortlist ataupun di review sekarang ni kalau you punya resume di review pun is consider good enough you know then at least people will put you as a part of the consideration and shortlist you. Okay? Right, Amira? I hope it's answered your question. Uh, right. Any other question, Akhil? I don't think the there's uh, any more answer to be raised. Uh, I would like to say thank you to Mr. Hafiz uh, for it's very uh, crystal clear explanation on the questions that, that have been raised. So uh, I think because all participants is very clear about uh, all the knowledge given. So uh, I think we can close the Q&A session now. Is it okay with you, Mr. Fis? I'm okay. Very okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, I would like to express my gratitude and thank you to Mr. Hafiz uh, for this golden opportunity to give us an exposure on uh, how does the industry uh, actually works on the interview, on the resume. Uh, especially most of us, uh, it's already on our third year now and we still have one more year left to actually keep up with uh, and also build our resume uh, to do internship. So this is a very good opportunity for us to absorb this knowledge and also we can start now to link in as what Mr. Hafiz has been uh, saying yes, and please. also build the resume. So uh, with the end of the Q&A session just now, I think our program is near to the end. So thanks again to our panel, Mr. Mama Hafiz bin Zulkhairi for your guidance throughout to this program. No so problem. we truly appreciate your time spent sharing your knowledge and also all your opinions on this topic. So on behalf of the organizer, we value the questions and problems that have been given us as they further enlighten us on the topic we discussed. Uh, I sincerely hope that all knowledge gained throughout this webinar will benefit all of us uh, in the future. So, however, before we end our program today, uh, it would be nice if we can take a group photo and I hope that all participants can open their camera to capture the memorable, this memorable moment. So, uh, I think I can pass on to our media team to take on uh, this photography session and sure. uh, I would like to remind that all participants you can uh, open up your camera, you can take a picture with Mr. Hafiz. I <laughs> Okay, uh, before before we end, I think, I think uh, while waiting for the uh, camera to set up, uh, I also share my QR code in the share screen if you can see, uh, my link in. Uh, <coughs> feel free to scan and uh, connect with me, all right? Uh, I'm very happy if all this, uh, you know, when Usain people come and greet me, uh, especially my, my juniors more. So I feel, uh, you know, when you already left your alma mater, alma mater, right? So when you come back, so it feel like a home again. So feel free to, jo uh, to connect me in LinkedIn, yeah, as per QR given. Uh, otherwise, if you can't get it uh, for now, then you might get from the organizer. I will share with the organizer later my link in as well. Okay. So, uh, is everyone ready? Uh, media team, check. Okay, uh, ready ke semua. Uh, boleh ke kalau ada Encik Hafiz uh, stop sharing slide? Oh, okay, yeah, Encik. Okay, yeah. Fotonya, sekejap. You ready ya. semua? Ok, 
Okay, ready ya? Oke. Okay. Satu, dua, tiga. Ya. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, ready. Satu, dua, tiga. Alright. Okay, last ya? Last ya? Oh, last lagi. Okay, last, last, last. <laughs> Ini okay. kalau buat fizikal ni memang sampai ke 12 ni tak gambar. <laughs> Okey, last. Satu, dua, tiga. Okey, that's all. Thank you semua. Thank you everyone. Uh, I really appreciate your time spent and uh, you also sacrifice your weekends also. That's a good thing. And that's that's a, uh, I will, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, Uh, ilmu ni you boleh share dengan kawan-kawan yang lain kalau tak ada yang dalam, dalam ni so at least this could help you in for your future uh, uh, career as well so to those who are currently in third year, second year and first year I wish you good luck belajar lelok okay and grab as much as opportunity in your university time enjoy your university time uh, study is study but also you need to also be involved with the surrounding as well in the community so Thank you so much everyone. I wish you good luck and assalamualaikum. Selamat berpuasa. Salam Ramadan. Okay. Take care everyone. Right. Thank you to Mr. Hafiz for your words of encouragement and motivation. So as the saying goes, to every beginning, there is an ending. So we extend our sincere appreciation and our most thanks to our respected panel, Mr. Muhammad Hafiz, our hosts and also university colleagues who are willing to spend their time to join this program, especially during this weekend. So representing SACRIFAM, I hope that all students can make use of the knowledge and they have gathered during this program for their own benefit and also others in the future. So So ladies and gentlemen, well, I believe that we have finally come to the end of our program. It has been a great day and a wonderful morning with all of you. Again, thank you for your presence. I hope that all my mistakes and shortcomings can be forgiven. We close this program by reciting Tasbih Kafarah and Surah Al-As. Thank you everyone. Assalamualaikum. So before uh, I end, all of the participants, you can scan the QR code that appears on the screen to fill the attendance form, right? Thank you for your participation and have a great weekend and also have a great SAM break and Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Terima kasih semua. Terima kasih Encik Hafiz. Thank you Encik Hafiz. Sama-sama. Right. Anything boleh dicok lagi ya. Okay, bye. Assalamualaikum. Hello.